Last month, I went on the road with a living legend, a journey with Mel Showers, a man who made history, becoming the first African American to lead a main television newscast in the Mobile, Pensacola market. This is his story. This is Dr. King Avenue. See, we have made any turns. Traveling the streets of Mobile. There's a Catholic cemetery to your left. With Mel Showers. Where most Catholics are buried in Mobile. Is a special treat. That's where I get my haircut, right over there. Through the eyes of a man who's seen a lot of change. This is central campus of Bishop State Community College. This is where I went to high school, Roseanne. We travel down Dr. King Avenue. Which used to be Davis Avenue. Absorbing invaluable. It used to be the economic heart of Mobile's black community. Nuggets of history. This is where my wife went to school. The most pure heart of Mary. To understand Mel, we end up where his life began. Roseanne Haven, this is the bottom. The city, you can't go any further. If you went farther to the north here, you would be in dead swamp. It's 100% swamp. And when I was a little boy, this is where we used to spend a lot of our time Exploring. The Bottom, an all-black neighborhood about a mile west of downtown Mobile. Gone are Mel's elementary school and homes where good people lived. The Bottom has produced lawyers, educators, other professionals, and the Bottom has also produced a news anchorman. After military service in 1969, 21-year-old Dees was brought here to the USA Medical Center by his brother. Mel began his broadcasting career, overcoming critics. Those early years when the hate mail would come in, not quite used to and not quite ready for a person of my complexion to hit that air. But I kept smiling. In 2015, his mother watched him take his place in the Alabama Broadcasters Association Hall of Fame. I don't deserve this, but I'm not giving it back. <laughs> Mrs. Annie Showers passed in 2017, but Mel hears her words very clearly. You might be from the bottom, but you don't have to act like it. <laughs> Her point, despite negative perceptions, you don't have to act in the manner people expect of you. In her opinion, we were not colored folks, second-class citizens. We were first-class citizens as far as she was concerned. Mrs. Showers refused to allow her children to use colored restrooms or drink from colored water fountains. We would walk from here into downtown Mobile, and my mother would tr try to make sure that we use the restroom, drank water, and what have you, before we went downtown. She also refused to let them use the side colored entrance at the Sanger, the same theater where Mel receives awards today. I'm Mel Showers, thank you. A symbol of how he continues to inspire others, black and white, to pursue their dreams in his humble and sincere fashion. They probably are saying to themselves, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And that's true. If I can do it, then anyone can do it. That's for sure. Oh, you're that's so humble. So very true. And it's 50 <laughs> years. It, it, that's just amazing to me. You actually started with WKRG in the fall of 1969, and you started as a booth announcer or and staff announcer. A, a booth announcer. Uh, in fact, my nickname for some people out there back then was uh -huh. Booth. Oh, okay. A booth announcer. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes. My first, uh, I would say, three or four years here at WKRG, well, I was a booth announcer. That no longer exists right now at WKRG. People now don't have any idea what a booth announcer was. And a booth announcer was an announcer. You, you, saw, you heard my voice more than you saw my face mm -hmm. back there when I first started. And I made the transition into news. Uh, 1974, 75. Okay, okay, so before before we were born. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so Mel, I mean, how did you end up becoming a news anchor? Because you said you really didn't even want to be on TV. Uh -huh. uh, that's very true, and to this day, to some extent, I, I, I hate the attention. I know. Yeah. I'm the wrong person. My personality doesn't fit the job, but I have done it now mm -hmm. for quite a while. You're the right person. And uh, I have learned to accept it. And it took a long time for me to accept the fact that uh, I was 
an anchor man mm -hmm. on TV. Mm -hmm. Okay, Devin, and I have a, a, a burning question for okay, you. Okay, let's hear it. Because we've both worked with you for a lot of years sitting beside you and have learned so much from you. Who's your favorite anchor? <laughs> Who's my favorite co-anchor? Yes, your favorite co-anchor. Okay, because uh, I'll tell you, that's that's easy. It's uh, you and Devin. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay. And, and the other question all the viewers always ask me, how old is Mel? Oh, oh that's that's no problem. I'm 72 years old. Okay, Aww. 72 years young. That's right. Well, there you go. I'll take that. We love you. But you know, out of all the anchors uh -huh. that I've worked with uh -huh. over the years, the co-anchors uh -huh. I've worked with, you two are two of them. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Yeah, we've heard it before. Well, we love you. We're happy to be celebrating this 50 years with you, Mel. Congratulations. Well, thank you so very much.